and I'm on the plane coming out, and I'm thinking, who the hell am I uh, to get up there and tell these people what to do? But I did not fly out here to tell you what to do or who to vote for. I cannot tell you who I'm voting for. But I guess that's no group history now. <laughs> that cat's kind of out of me. I'm not really one to talk anybody on or off of position. And I think you'd be surprised how I've labored over what I'm going to say and how I'd say it. This isn't something I do. It's certainly something I don't want to make a habit out of. Ordinarily, I would just cast my vote and get back to work, and that's as far as I would dip into this. But I don't know, something feels different. It's been a funny year. Maybe it's been that way for a few years. <laughs> and I don't feel I'm needed in any special way or qualified to pronounce on the national mood or the times we're living in. But I can tell you what my experience has been leading into this room. The things I've been hearing at the table and at work, or any time I pass a television, or someone's open laptop, is starting to feel inescapable. And the internet, our language itself is getting blunt. It's getting meaner. It's drifting into extremes. The contrast's only getting starker. Good and bad, friend and enemy, traitor, patriot. The mentality seems to be that we're in the midst of some indefinable but worsening crisis. A moral crossroads, if you will. That there's less margin for error now. That you're not speaking unless you're railing against something. That nothing short of a crusade counts anymore as an opinion. That the only way to get somewhere is to turn your back on your opponent and throw all your weight in the other direction. That if you don't agree with me in all particulars, then we are in opposition. That the best way to advance yourself is to be the loudest voice in the mob. To carry your point at all costs. And establish that anyone who can't hear you or doesn't agree, doesn't matter. Speaking out against something is not where I find myself right now. And the person who speaks for me is also going to be someone who listens to. I found Pete to be that way. He won't compete to be the loudest. I don't see his arms flapping. <laughs> his silences are those of someone who can wait until he has something worked out in his mind to speak. And when he does, he can trust his ideas. And he doesn't have to yell. A sense of alarm is easy to stoke in this country. Flame is easy to fan. Threats easy to embellish. It's tempting for us to want to look past our own faults and throw our blame and our anger all in the same direction. But that is a cheap, cheap version of unity. Exploiting those fears and deepening divisions, it is not leadership. It's a road to power. For some we're short on talent and conscience. But some alarm bells can't be ignored. There are actions I personally believe we have to take, and we're already late in doing it. And if you're sweating the same things that I am, we should sound that alarm together. But a nation in perpetual crisis and permanent anxiety isn't a great baseline for moving forward. It can cloud your judgment, it can wear you out. It's dangerous. Rising in this country is supposed to be about good ideas. And if you don't have them, and you can't have them all, you have to have, we well, have to have the strength and the good sense
to attach yourself and the country to the ones that help us rise together and lift others from despair. It takes a certain humility to listen, to recognize and, and promote a good idea when it isn't yours. It takes courage to do that in the face of ridicule and partisanship and narrow-mindedness. I see Pete as having that kind of courage, as being more concerned with getting things right and afraid of looking bad. I see the type of openness and character that inspire and invite our best ideas, with the unique ability and the true desire to give credit for its own, even when that might not be politically convenient. I also see him as having the wisdom and strength to identify when yesterday's good ideas no longer apply. When you sit with Pete and you talk with him, when you see him out in front of an audience, whether he's at home or out in public, I get the sense that these are all pretty much the same person, the same guy, where the inside equals the outside, where he'll prove himself when there's no proof possible and no one around to judge but himself. Moral courage speaks with a certain clarity. Listen for it. You've heard it throughout history. You know what it sounds like. We know who got it right. And what the echoes would sound like today. It's our job to listen and not get fooled. See if you don't hear those echoes this afternoon. One of our most public and consequential acts as a citizen is also intensely personal and intensely private. It's one of those moments when you're curtained off and no one's watching. For me, in those moments, I never feel quite alone. For me, that's a crowded little booth. I've got some hard eyes on me. And some hopeful ones, too. And I need to act in a way that I can live with. And that's what led me here today. Whether your road leads you to Pete, like mine has, that's for you to judge. But every four years, we we get the chance together to either, either hold the course we're on or set up a signal that we've tried it and it's not right. And we're going to demand something better. That power, that awesome responsibility originates here on the ground in Iowa. What you do with your vote is to put those first seeds in the ground and see what grows next year. There's a chance to come out of Iowa with a path lit and the way clear toward a future we've decided that we are done waiting for. When Pete speaks of unity, it's the kind of unity I've been waiting and hoping to hear about. It's not just for my side or those who think like I do. The progress he, he talks about isn't my progress at the expense of yours? The strength he describes isn't the kind that limits compassion. When Pete invokes the name of America, it's as, it's as someone who's gone out and fought for it. He's a man who not only understands how the world looks at us, but how history looks and how we ought to look at ourselves. And maybe the most, and maybe most importantly, I see Pete as a man of his moment, and maybe of his time. Being here today with you, and being here for him, has certainly been your time. It would be my place to tell you what to do with this chance. I just want to 
want to invite you to listen with me, see if you hear what I hear. That's 